That's why I just went on a walk around my lovely English town. And do you know what I saw? Lots of houses. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Not just any houses, the iconic English semi-detached house. And I thought, why not bring England to Bloxburg today and build one of these houses, which also means I need to look a bit more British. Yo, what's happening? <laughs> I now look like a classic British chav. And I forgot to mention, I'm actually technically building two houses today. We're going to be decorating both sides of the semi-detached house. So let's get started. But just to solidify it in your mind again, this is what a semi-detached house looks like. And this right here is going to be the middle line. And and what we're actually going to do is make this extra thick. So we have our two curved windows either side, and then you have the front door just next to it. Now, don't get me wrong. Some semi-detached houses will actually have garages on them as well. So I might treat us to having a garage too. Now, I don't know if you have semi-detached houses in America. I have personally never seen one. But if you do, let me know in the comments. But I see a lot of Americans on TikTok seeing semi-detached houses and being like, why is every house in England so big? When in reality, this is two separate houses. So next up, I'm not going to lie. There's only two roofs we use in England. It's either the mansard roof or the gable roof. And today I will be using the pointy one just because it looks so much better. And there we go. I'm ready to move in already, darling. For the front doors, we often actually have traditional ones. Like they're quite nice. And as much as I hate it, we do have panel windows. I have a burning hatred for these windows in Bloxburg. But you can't tell me this does not look like this. And then for the middle ones, we're going to be using the other type of panels. And this is actually trippy. I feel like I'm walking down just a typical road. Next part is texture, which can be tricky. Honestly, I don't even know what the front texture of my real life house is. I actually don't know. It might be brick or maybe it's concrete. But as you can see on some of these houses, it's actually brick on the bottom and then different on the top. We also can't forget, I think they're called cornerstones. And then finally is what I like to call cladding. That is just such a satisfying word to say. Brows. Yeah, she's a lovely word. The queen of all words, of course moist. Basically just these wooden beams that go along the front of the house. And I personally think this red roof tile would match it perfectly. That actually does. Okay, I'm not even going to shave myself. That looks better than I expected. The one complaint I do have, and this is just me being very nitpicky, I personally think it would look a bit better if we had three windows along the front rather than two. And then not going to lie, I don't often fly over my house. So I'm guessing we just have roof tiles up here. And I feel like it's kind of iconic to have like the red side and the blue side. I don't know why this just feels like it could be the set for a sitcom or something. I'm loving it. So we've got a couple more things to do before we can actually move inside, which I'm literally shaking about. Do is obviously add the big beams that go along the roofs. The only point in having these big chunky, chunky roofs is that because they've got that gorgeous pattern on them. So finally, we'll add the chimneys in. And then the last thing is solar panels. I never add these because I just think, what a waste of money. Absolute waste of time. But you find these on so many English houses. And I've added a bit to the outside, but we'll do that towards the end. It's now time to go inside. So if I just swoosh you over to this page here, we have two floor plans. The first one is this. So as you can see, we're going to have the sitting room on the right. And then the rest is all open plan. And then the second house, it's a little bit different. We have the dining room, then a living room, and then a tiny kitchen. And this, I'm going to be honest, is more realistic to most houses. Normally in England, you'll walk in, there'll be a living room, a dining room, and then a kitchen. And the stairs will always just be as you walk in. However, as we have just seen, some can be slightly different. So here we're going to have the living room there, then the a kitchen, dining, and a utility, and a bathroom. Then as we head upstairs, like clockwork, there's always the smallest bedroom at the front here. There's then the master bedroom, family bathroom, and guest bedroom. And you might be wondering, Reese, where is the ensuite bathrooms? No. Hell to the no. I'm sorry. Unless you renovate your house, you're not getting an ensuite bathroom upstairs in England. No, 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 honey. So what side should we start with? I kind of want to start with the more exciting side, which is definitely this one. What doors shall we have for the interior? Honestly, this is what they look like in real life. But I think for the sake of it today, we're going to use panels. And lots of people have renovated their house to have wooden doors. And it's not actually unrealistic to have an archway either. Now in our kitchens, we also don't normally have gorgeous checkers. I feel like I'm just slandering British houses. They are nice, I promise you. They're just not as nice as a typical American house. But if you were to teleport to England right now to do a house viewing, this is what your empty kitchen would look like. I swear, this is so realistic. So I think we'll have the dining table here. It makes more sense to have it here than blocking up the door. 
doors. As for the chairs, I am just gonna make it look aesthetic. I don't really care. I don't care. Because to be fair, if you had a modern house like this, you probably would have modern furniture. Wonderful. And then in real life, we don't put loads of silly things on our wall. Like we don't put shelves with potted plants hanging down them. We normally instead have big murals of things that we love. <laughs> Then for the kitchen itself, I feel like everyone loves modern these days. People are literally choosing to renovate their house all modern. And I mean, I haven't got a problem with that. I just personally love traditional myself. And since we are making this realistic, we I can't bring myself to do it. I cannot bring myself to use this ugly oven. I'm sorry, that poor oven gets so bullied by me, but, and I am actually gonna use this fridge. A lot of people have these dispensers these days with like water and ice. We had a fridge with an ice dispenser and then it broke. See how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. I'm not gonna lie, countertops are so boring. As for appliances, again, this is so different to what I'd normally do in Bloxburg. I'd normally add like heat warming trays, glass dispensers, unless your Mary Poppins, you don't have that in your house. Along the side of my counters, I have a kettle. I do have a blender, but it's in the cupboard. But just for today, I will add the blender out. And then the final thing I also have out is a toaster. I suppose if we're being ultra realistic as well, we should add some outlets so you can actually power these appliances. But yeah, you just don't have everything laying around. So yeah, this is a typical kitchen dining, to be fair. I wouldn't be surprised if someone left their house like this. However, it's becoming more and more common to have an island, so I'll add this. So if we didn't have a laundry room here, then it's actually very, very common in England to have your washing machine in the kitchen. It in fact, I'm gonna add one here anyway. So in these two rooms, we'll add a bit of tile. That's realistic, I'd say. And also, unlike Bloxburg, we do actually have to add windows in almost every room because otherwise we just won't be seeing anything. I can't see! I can't see! As for lights, it's the simple light for us. So for laundry rooms, these, to be fair, are pretty similar to how you'd have it in Bloxburg. Just your counters and then your laundry machine on top. And I'm basing this off of my friend's laundry room, which I actually threw up in their sink once. <laughs> it was basically a party at the house and it was just, it was getting too crazy, guys. So thank goodness she had one. Now, just next door, we're having the downstairs bathroom. You definitely would not have a shower downstairs. This would be strictly for sinks. And I'm not even gonna sit here and say, oh, potted plants aren't realistic because in my bedroom alone, I have about three plants and a painting, which I'm gonna change to be like, live, laugh, love, or some other cringe mum picture. Next up is the hallway, and I'm gonna continue the marble in there. Then inside of lounge rooms and stuff, this is where the planks come about. And I'd say maybe a dark torp is realistic. And I almost forgot we have the garage here. Let's just put concrete in there. Now, garages in the UK are very, very basic. You almost never store your car in them. But again, just for the video's sake, I am gonna put a car. But what they're mostly used for is storage. And gasoline cans, oh my gosh, they're so handy. My neighbor has one, bless him. And whenever we, for some reason, don't fill up our cars, he just brings us his little gasoline can. And then finally, the best way to conceal all your rubbish, car boxes. And oh my gosh, I actually kind of like the dinginess of this. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. So we've only got two more rooms downstairs on this side. I forget we have that whole other one to do as well. I should probably be getting my jig on. So we're going to be going for white walls everywhere, apart from actually, I'm going to put a feature wall in the living room. And sometimes in England, this is called the front room. And that's because it's at the front of the house. So if you've ever wondered why we sometimes call it the front room, that's why. And oh my gosh, I know exactly what to put on this. Facebook, that is like the most Facebook mum thing I've ever seen. I got an A. It's giving beauty and brains, bestie. And then I'm not going to put books or anything because you don't normally have a pile of books there. Also, next to the stairs, we don't normally have railings. We actually have walls, which for some reason, I'm being denied. Do not deny me while I'm trying to make this this lovely educational video. Finally, some people have hat stands and umbrellas. And there we go. It looks bland, but truly, that's all you'd have in an entryway. Finally, is the lounge room. So there are many different setups you can have the lounge room. I'm just going to do the first one that comes to my mind, which is the good old-fashioned TV stand in the corner. This is actually a little bit 1970s, but then again, a lot of people live in houses from the 70s. And then normally it's two sofas and an armchair. On the sofa, we're gonna use leather. I never use this, but I suppose a lot of sofas are made out of leather. As for end tables, I, I'm not gonna add them because you just don't really have that. But what is a little bit more common is a coffee table. So this is probably one of the more basic rooms, but living rooms tends to be. So there we go, we can now technically go upstairs. You might be wondering, Reese, why are you saying technically? Well, all I'm going to be doing up here is adding the iconic carpet that is in every English house. And just before we do the upstairs, we are now heading over to the other house to 
do this downstairs. So this house is going to be very slightly different. Obviously, we have a different layout, but it's also not going to be as modernized. This house over here has definitely undergone some sort of recent renovation. Everything is white, everything is pristine, everything is modern. Whereas this one is going to be if you had just left the house how it was. So first of all, all of the floor would be wood. I am going to make it a slightly lighter wood so it's a bit easier to deal with. And I'm not even going to dignify the garage. <laughs> We're just gonna make that exactly the same. There you go, I've just made it exactly the same as the other one. So as you walk into a house like this, here is where we can actually make use of some of the other wall trims in the game. Back in the 1930s, all the way up to the 1970s, houses often had these around the sides. And honestly, I quite like them. Furthermore, let's go and see what other doors we could use. But perhaps this glass door is actually rather realistic. As for the walls, if we were going really old granny style, they might be like this, but I'm not, I'm not gonna do that to your guys' eyesight. So again, we're going to start with the kitchen, which is very, very small in this house. Ooh, that's kind of small. So it would typically wrap around almost the entire house. If the entire house, no, the entire room, if it was actually this small. And a lot of people will just have their fridge just out in the open like this. And you might be thinking, well, they're semi-detached. Why aren't they the same? Because different owners have different tastes. It's that simple. As for the layout of the kitchen, it's going to be very much a similar idea. But of course, we're going to be sticking with that blue theme here and the red theme over there. And honestly, slay with this house though. And finally, oh my gosh, I don't want to put the final thing on this wall. A notice board. Oh my gosh. I did not think that would be that big. A notice board. I'm so sorry. There you go. And that's normally what you put the calendar on as well. So you can remember everything you got to do. As we move into the living room and the dining room, the older houses actually were a little bit more grand. They were the type of houses to have chandeliers in them. So in this front room is where we're going to have the dining table, which sounds very weird to me because like front room should be a living room. But when it's your house, you can move the rooms around and I might be a devil and leave this as the default colors. 12 seconds later. No, I can't. I really want to, but I just, it's too triggering for me. I just can't do it. And can we also talk about how cheap this video has been so far? We've literally spent 200K only. That is pretty good. Along this back wall, we're going to have a fireplace, which again, since we have a chimney, is not that unbelievable that we have a fireplace in here. What a lovely dining room. And since I've already done the hallway, that last room down here is the lounge room. Now I'm starting to think I should have made this one a bit more modern, but it's a Okay, we can kind of do that here. I think we should have the big, big sofa at a tiny slant over in this zone. And then the armchair here. And that's because we're going to do an entertainment center. There we go. That's our little settee area. And we'll finish this corner off here with some bookshelves. And wow. Wow. I love these. So now all we have left to do is the upstairs. Now, so I am realizing this would probably be a little bit more realistic if it was linen carpet. And as for the doors, we're obviously not going to have glass doors upstairs. That'd be foul. So instead, we're going to have the striped solid door, which I really don't like too much. But upstairs hallways, I'm not lying, they are almost always empty. But just to make you all happy, I will add a little cabinet thing here. And don't get me wrong, guys, you might be thinking, this looks nothing like my English house. This is not realistic at all, Reese's. Of course, there are some houses in England that are far bigger than this. But for the most part, when you walk down a normal street, it, these are the kinds of houses you're going to see. So we'll start off with actually the guest bedroom. And what is the light called? A slanting ceiling light. I didn't even know what that was called because you just never use this normally. But again, this looks very realistic to a bedroom light. So let's say this is a family of five. We have like the youngest here, mum and dad's room, and then the like two middle ones share. We'll go ahead and add a twin bed in here. I'm not going to make it too big and detailed. And that really is the difference between Bloxburg and real life. If this was normal, I'd be making it all amazing. And oh my gosh, I really like that. That is so cute. That yellow plaid bedding. What the hell? And is there like a space themed wall? Oh, I guess we could do this. I love that. And we've simply got to give them a toy each. So this one can have a platypus and this one can have a polar bear. As for wardrobes, you typically either have a built-in wardrobe or just a classical wardrobe and dresser. And then maybe if these guys are still a bit young, they might have a toy cabinet or something. Now the way I'm going to be doing the upstairs is basically just flipping it on each side and slightly changing it. Mainly because these types of houses would look very identical in real life. And I don't know quite know how it slipped my mind to add a desk in here. 
And I'd say it's a bit more realistic to have a laptop rather than an actual computer. Next up is time for the bathroom. I've been so excited for this one. We're going to go ahead and search up tile because all bathrooms are tiled in England. And I'd say this rectangular one is fitting the bill. If you were to renovate one room in your house, it would be your bathroom. So I'm going to allow myself to make this one the fanciest because I've been missing my fancy vibe, guys. What do you mean? So we're going to have this oval mirror, this lovely sink. And then, of course, a similar but not identical sort of thing on this side. Now, I'm only going to do one more room on camera and then the rest I'm going to speed build. And we are going to start with the modern master bedroom. I love this. I love a master bedroom. I don't know why. It just gets my grooves going. And this room is my chance to actually make the most of the pillows Bloxburg has to offer. Now, in a bedroom this size, you'd normally see the vanity at the edge of the window. And you might be wondering, Reese's, how do you know that? Well, basically, when I go on my walks, I can always see this mirror poking through the window. If you're from the UK, you absolutely know what I mean. And I actually was quite smart to add the closets <gasps> here. I'm sorry, that was quite a good idea, you must admit. Because I thought we had this space in the middle of the wall anyway. Let's see, use it. So as I said, I just quickly sped up and did the other rooms. And how could I, guys? I almost forgot about the gardening on the outside. So remember, this is the modern house here. We're very much going to reflect that in the gardening. So what I mean by that is each side of the path, we're simply just going to have these very sleek, very modern, very demure. Very demure. And then we'll have a little bit of gardening just going on in the corners. And along each side, we'll just have this classic wooden fence. And then outside this house, which I feel like is kept by a lovely old man. For some reason, this whole video, I've just been imagining a sweet old man. This house is more likely to have a couple of trees outside, but just some small trees, like a little bit of a lemon tree, maybe. And with that, the British houses are built. So let's go look around. I forgot I'm a chair. So if you're curious, the price for two British semi-detached houses in blocks is $360,000, which would probably be the price of only one in real life. So I think we should start off with the right house. I had to do that thing with my fingers there. I'm 18 years old and I still don't know my lefts and rights apparently. But yes, I feel like this one is a little bit worse and I wanted to save the best till last. But as we go inside, oh my gosh, it feels like I'm just in one of my friend's houses, guys. Oh my God, this does not happen in real life. I tell you that for free. So as you walk in, oh my gosh, this actually is really trippy for me as a UK person. So to the left, we first of all have the dining room. And this is where you'd be probably having most of your meals, especially because this house doesn't have like a kitchen table or anything. I love the big window at the front. This is one of my favorite things about UK houses, actually. Then as we go back into our hallway, we then have the lounge room. And I thought this was a very British sort of painting, but I actually really love the lounge room in this house. And finally, the little kitchen. If somebody built this meal on like a bill battle or something, I would be appalled. I would be disgraced. Yay, disappointment. But for building a realistic English house, it's definitely met the vibe. As we go upstairs, more just basicness we are met with. First of all, we have the little bathroom. And I did forget a window in this, so it's sort of like a prison asylum. This is where you can wash off all your dirt, you know. And then in here, we have the twin bedroom. This is actually quite cute and one of the most realistic rooms I think we've actually built today. And then we have two more. This one is just sort of, I thought, maybe the teenage room. Very, very demure. Demure. And then finally, the parents' bedroom. So this is Betty's house. We're going to go next door to visit Marjorie, who actually lives in this. And oh my gosh, from down here, it's so realistic too. I did forget to show you the garage on that one, but it's literally exact same as this. So as we walk into this house, it's a little bit more aesthetic, because obviously this is being renovated. I reckon this one would be a bit more expensive. We can, of course, get to the garage through here, but the first room on the right is the lounge room, which I love. I've always found the idea of the front room a little bit creepy, because anyone walking past on the street can literally just walk up to your window and looking at you. As we go through, it's a little bit more open plan than the other one. We obviously have our dining room and our kitchen, which is very, very demure. I don't know why I'm suddenly obsessed with that word now. We also have our laundry room just tucked away in here and our lovely little bathroom. Live, love, love. But yeah, I absolutely love the downstairs of this one. It's not too big, but it still feels kind of perfect. In here is the more modern bathroom, which I most definitely prefer to the other house. Also, I made a nursery in this rather than having it as an older teen bedroom. The twin bedroom is pretty similar. This actually looks very cute and not chavvy at all. These houses aren't really chavvy to be fair. And then finally the master bedroom which just absolutely slayed the day away. I do hope all of you guys liked watching this video. <laughs> Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.